This is the Elleglide M1 Plus e-bike with 29 inch wheels. And let me say right at the very outset that I love this bike. I love its looks, I love how it performs, and I love the price. It's currently selling on Amazon UK for about 850 quid. And for an e-bike, that's a very realistic budget price indeed. But is it a realistic budget bike? Well, I believe it is. It mostly has good components, although like most bikes like this, the components are at the, the lower end of the range of well-known manufacturers like, like Shimano. But they work, and they work effectively, and that's the important thing. So let's have a wee look at it. The bike Ellie Glide sent me is matte black with attractive branding and decals, and I think the black and yellow works really well together. But more than anything else, this just looks like a good quality hardtail mountain bike. It doesn't look big and ugly like many bikes of you know, at this sort of price range. And I don't think the big battery pack takes away from the looks at all. The battery can of course be removed for charging and it's locked in place when, when you ride the bike. It's not the biggest of batteries. It's a 36 volt, 12.5 amp hour lithium battery and it powers the pedal assist function of the bike, which is set to five different levels. And that'll take you up to a legal limit of uh, about 50 miles an hour. The LED limit shows what pedal assist level you're riding at and has the, the usual functions as well. Speed, trip distance, odometer, uh, light on and off, push assist, things that you'd expect really. Now the display shows in miles or kilometres but I'd like to have seen it show um, fractions of miles rather than just miles. You know, miles a long way uh, and I like to know when I've you know, gone maybe 0.5 of a mile or 0.7 of a mile um, but maybe that's just me, uh, maybe it's just a personal preference. As well as five pedal assist modes, this bike also has a 21 speed Shimano gears, three cogs at the front and seven at the back. There's a sun run drivetrain and front derailleur, uh, and the, real, uh, the, the, the rear derailleur is a Shimano Tourney, which is you know, pretty respectable. Mechanical disc brakes stop you quite effectively, though I'd have preferred hydraulic brakes myself, but I'm not sure who the manufacturer of the brakes is, but you know, they work fine. They certainly stop the bike. Now I'm a wee bit hesitant about this bike as a proper mountain bike, and that's because the, uh, the front suspension, um, again, unbranded, it appears a little soft to me, so I wouldn't want to go airborne on it, even if I could. <laughs> I've used it on forest tracks and, and some you know, straightforward single track, and, and it rides and handles very well indeed. But on really rough, rocky terrain, you know, there's lots of boulders and whatnot, it feels a wee bit on the rattly side. Um, and there's a the usual lock function and, 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 and generally speaking on, on tarmac and, and forest trails it provides soft damping and, and, and shock absorbing which is absorption which is quite satisfactory. With this model the Elliglide offers a choice of 2.8 sorry 27.5 or 29 inch wheels and I chose the bigger ones 29 inch largely because of my height and weight um, I've got 29 inch wheels on my gravel bike and I kind of like the sense of better rolling that they provide. The tyres are made by CST, a fairly well respected uh, Chinese company um, and these tyres are 2.1 inch all terrains models and they're, they're quite knobbly and they hold the ground well. There's also a front adaptive LED headlight, which is fine for night riding, although I should point out I haven't really ridden it very much in the dark, just because of the time of year. Curiously, there isn't a rear light provided, and I'm not sure why, why not. Now, the thing that really drives this bike, apart from your pedalling, of course, is the 250 watt brushless 36 volt hub motor. Now, most of these cheaper bikes come with hub motors as, as opposed to the crank motors you'll find in more expensive bikes. And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure um, which is best. 
I've got a crank motor on my Trek Powerfly um, and I kind of rather like the fact that the, the weight of it and the battery are in the centre of the bike. Now a hub motor is on the back wheel uh, and it makes the bike just a bit heavy on the, on, on the back wheel I think. You know a wheel that also has to cope with, with my weight as well. So I think this, if, this affects the handling of the bike just a bit but not really to a degree that would affect, it certainly would affect my cycling, I don't think. But it's worth bearing in mind. On this early glide model, the, the plus version, the handlebars are a wee bit longer than on the, the basic model. These are 700mm and the bike frame is made from aluminium alloy. Okay, so that's the rundown on the bike itself. So let's take it out for a wee ride now and see how it performs. So, first thing I have to say is this bike rides like a dream. Either on tarmac, on forest trails, on easier trails you'd normally associate with, you know, with, with mountain bikes. It's great. In terms of performance, I've been getting around 40 miles or so to a battery charge. But again, as with any e-bike, so much depends on how you ride it. Off-road, with hills, um, you know, that'll deplete the battery much much quicker than a ride along flat tarmac roads so it's kind of difficult to put a definitive uh, number of, of miles on it. Now having said that I'm confident I'll get in excess of 30 miles from a charge uh, on the most challenging terrain and that's okay that's absolutely fine. As with many e-bikes it's not always good to rely on the the battery bar count on the LED display. It's not uncommon for the bars to drop and then kind of rebound back when you you're, when you reach easier ground. Uh, and this is known as battery sag. And I found it much safer to check out the battery levels on the battery itself rather than rely on the LED display. So overall, I think this is a brilliant bike for the price and um, makes a fantastic entry-level bike for anyone moving into the, the e-bike world. The manual gives the overall weight of 22.8 and that's about 50 pounds. 
still heavy as e-bikes go, but at the least, you know, you can get this one on my, my, my tow bar bike rack. Uh, and that opens up the whole country to me. Stick the bike in the back of the camper van and off I go using my Bluetti power bank to charge the bike battery overnight. I'll put the details of this bike uh, down below along with details of Ellie Glide. Oh, and um, this bike is available on Amazon UK as well. So if you found this video even remotely useful, uh, please think about subscribing to the channel. And if you can, give us a like, Gov. That all makes a big, big difference to the, the YouTube algorithms and, and helps get the videos out to a, a wider audience, or, or so I'm told. So if you're into the cycling habit, enjoy your bike. And if you're into camper vanning, as, as always, Take it easy out there and enjoy your van life. See you next time. Bye-bye.